Before we get started, before I pray, I just want to I just want to share a little joke. <laughs> I, I I I you know, I'm a jokester. I like to cut up. So, there was this woman, elderly lady, and there was a burglar broke into her house. And she didn't have anything. She said, "You know what? I'm going to quote Acts 2:38." She says, Acts 2.38, and the burglar just stopped and froze. The police get there, and they ask the burglar. He said, what made you stop and freeze? He said, well, she said she had an axe in 2.38s. <laughs> I thought that was good. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Guy would be proud of me right now. He would be proud of me. That's right. <clears throat> let's pray and let's see what the Lord has in store for us this morning. I'm super excited. I'm so thankful you're here. I'm here. And more importantly, Jesus is here. And the Holy Spirit is here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the opportunities that you have placed in each and every one of our lives, Lord. I thank you for my brothers and sisters here this morning. I thank you for the Holy Spirit here, right here amongst us. And you are preparing our hearts to receive your word this morning. Lord, we're so grateful and thankful for your wonderful Son, Jesus Christ, and the grace that you have poured out on each and every one of our lives. So Lord, I pray over this service that my words be the words of God that you orchestrate this just the way you want to, Father. I thank you for your Holy Spirit here orchestrating right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's turn to the Word. Let's go to Psalms 141 and verse 3. And I'm going to tell you, I got a very exciting message this morning. Very exciting. And as I was beginning to prepare this message in my heart, I realized, I said, Lord, I probably need this message more than anybody in the congregation or any visitor that might show up this morning. I said, I need this more than any of them. He said, don't worry. When you hear my words speak out of your mouth, you'll get it too. It's a done deal. So, in Psalms 141 and verse 3, uh, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. You see? Keep watch over the door of my lips. Uh-oh. That is something to be said right there. I, I, I said, okay, Lord, set a guard. So you're telling me every time I want to say something, I need to refer to the guard that is over my mouth before I speak. And some of you know me from personal experiences and knowing me and seeing me. Before seeing me now, and a lot of times you'll say, Watch out, Joe, don't let that old Joe get to talking. Don't let that old man get to running his mouth. But you let that guard guard you. You with me? Keep watch over the door of my lips. That is so beautiful. Keep a watch over it. So not only are you got a guard, but you got that watch that is continually to watch every word that comes out of your mouth. You're telling me, you mean I got to watch everything I say? No. You ain't got to watch it. You say what you want and be destroyed. You with me? Say what you want and be destroyed. I'm a living testimony. Say what you want and be destroyed. Turn right here to Proverbs 13.3. Y'all with me this morning? Amen. Amen. It feels good. It does. I was coming in this morning... And I told Megan, I said, I feel the anointing that I have felt in the past, and I just know God's going to do something great and wonderful this morning. And if you're here, if you're online, I'm telling you right now, you're in for a treat. You're in for the greatest gift that God has ever given you. He's given you Jesus, but He's also given you the Holy Spirit. And it's so beautiful. Proverbs 13.3. Everybody there? I don't hear many pages. I, cell phones, cell phones. Okay, good deal. Praise God for media in the back. They got it up there. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 13, 3. Those who control their tongue will have a long life. Open your mouth. 
Opening your mouth can ruin everything. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. You know, you think about everything that you say, a lot of times we don't even think before we say it. And I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there because there's four types of people. Four, very important, but we're going to get there. But me being simple-minded as I am, I always ask the Lord. I said, Lord, give me some keys to help remind me to watch what I say. And he said, okay, easy, easy. He says, here's you three words to remember, and you can write these down. You can keep these for your own, or you can write them down, and as soon as you leave, you can throw them away, whichever is up to you. <laughs> but uh, three Ps, pause, ponder, and pray. A lot of times, you don't even have time. You say, I'm right in the middle of a conversation. Go silent. Go silent. Instantly start, start praying on the inside of you in the Holy Spirit. Be edifying the body. Edifying the spirit man that lives on the inside of you. Praying in that Holy Spirit. You with me? That's what I want to... I'm going to get to it. But as you learn to... And I'm learning also. Pause, ponder, and pray. The more you have the willpower over the flesh to pause, ponder, and pray, the more you begin to see the fruit of the Holy Spirit evident in your lives. The love, the joy. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have an issue getting angry? Uh-oh. Hey, man, I'm, I'm in the house th this morning. Thank y'all. I figured y'all all say, no, no, Joe. But I'm glad I'm in the house of honest people that we can come together, we can encourage each other, lift each other up, and read the Word of God and go from glory to glory in Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay. So... Where was I at? Where was I at? Help me. Do we have an issue getting angry? Then you probably got an issue talking. Wow. See, the enemy tried to let me forget to say that because my one-track mind, but hey, praise God, I got my brothers and sisters here this morning. Okay, turn with me to James 1.19. That's James 1.19. And I, I just want to tell you that it is always a pleasure and an honor to understand God's grace. And we're all in the area of grace. We're all learning. We're all understanding what God wants for us. And, and it's so beautiful, so beautiful. So James chapter 1, verse 19. So then... My beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, you with me? And slow to wrath. Anger. Slow to anger. So if you're slow to speak, you're slow to get angry. I said, I like that, Lord. Teach me that. Because the first thing that comes at me is I get tempered. And then for me to fight that temper, I have to start praying in the Holy Spirit. And once I begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, it comes upon me to overcome the temptation of getting angry. But if I open my mouth, the enemy uses my mouth. But if I get in the Holy Spirit, you see? You with me? Okay. Let's uh, jump down to verse 26. James 1 and verse 26. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. I said, oh no, Lord. Oh no. Oh no. James knows something that I need to know. You mean to tell me my witness can be jeopardized over the way I talk? There's employees that I work with. And how do I expect them... To ask me for prayer. How do I expect them to lead them to salvation if they see me get tempered and open my mouth and talk a certain way? Can anybody agree? Can anybody? Amen. Amen. Y'all looking kind of holy at me this morning. 
your witness. You know, in 2016, I gave my life to the Lord here, and I know y'all have heard several times my testimony. It's a miracle of God. In 2019, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you, that was the greatest thing I ever experienced. There is a key to life. And I'm going to tell you that key, and you can write this down. That key is, repent of your sin, put your faith in God, be water baptized, and filled with the Holy Spirit. That's it. That's it. I don't care how intelligent you are. I don't care if you can't read. I don't care if you only read two scriptures, five scriptures, two chapters, one chapter. It doesn't make a hill of beans. If you repent of your sin, you put your faith in God, and you be water baptized, and be filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you right now, the Holy Spirit will give you everything. And I'm going to make a room for that. I'm not going to preach long. I'm going to make a room because I believe God wants to meet you right where you're at this morning. And I want to make time for you. If you don't already know Jesus, I want you to meet Jesus. And if you ain't already been filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you already have the Holy Spirit, I want you to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to be confident in the things of God. So beautiful. So beautiful. Witnessing to others, watch your mouth. Look at your neighbor and say, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. That's the title of this message. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. There was a, a famous phrase during World War II. Loose lips. Man, boy. That's good stuff. Loose lips sink ships. My loose lips will call somebody to sink a ship will cause somebody to sink their ship because God has called me to go into the marketplaces, to go into anywhere He sends me and to be that person that He can use my mouth. But if I'm loose-lipped, guess what? The enemy sinks their ship. If I'm loose-lipped, the enemy will sink their ship. I, am, I bring the lifeguard. I bring Jesus with me. I'm throwing the rafts out. And if you grab Jesus, He's going to bring you to the to the surface. You with me? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look here. It's better for them to think you are a fool. You with me? Uh-oh. There you go. Terry said it over there, or Chris did. Somebody, I heard it. Then for you to open your mouth and leave no doubt. Boy, that'll talk right there because I tell you what. Before Jesus... I didn't have a lick of sense. Now that I have Jesus, I still ain't got a lick of sense. <laughs> I still ain't got a lick of sense. But praise God, if I just keep my mouth shut, the Holy Spirit will reveal to people's hearts to what He wants them to think about me, what He needs them to, to see in me, to see Him. You with me? So, stay with me. It's better for them to think you are a fool than for you to open your mouth and leave no doubt. Turn with me to uh, Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 27 and 28. That's Proverbs 17, verse 27 and 28. <clears throat> you know, it's so beautiful. And I love saying it's beautiful. Because I, before, before Jesus, I never said anything was beautiful. But now as I look at what God's created... Here on earth, it's so beautiful. It's so wonderful that we have the, the capabilities of being here on earth. That there's gravity holding us to the earth. If you look at how wonderful God has created the animals, how, how wonderful He's created man and woman to communicate. You walk in the, in the backyard and you look at your dog and you say, Come here, you stupid little dog. You look so good. Come here, you little dumb dog. And that dog don't know what you're saying. But he picks up on your energy. He comes right over to you and pets you. I mean, you pet him. And he licks you. You see? But humans, we can communicate with one another. You with me? So let's read here. Proverbs 17, 27. A truly wise person uses few words. A person with understanding is even-tempered. 
even fools are thought wise. When they keep silent, their mouths shut, they seem intelligent. You with me? They seem smart. I seem smart if I shut my mouth. Still don't know nothing. But thank God Jesus knows everything. And if I, I refer back to the Holy Spirit, and every time, pause, ponder, and pray. Paul, stop. Oh boy, they don't like it when you stop. He don't like me. He ain't rolling with what I say. He ain't doing what I want him to do. Because a lot of times the enemy will use somebody to come at you to test your faith. You, you see? And I'm telling you right now, we're all in the area of grace in this situation. we all in the area of grace. But if we bring light to darkness, we expose every agenda the enemy has. I was listening to a meeting that Pastor Guy shared of Steve Vickers, our senior pastor over all the campuses. And I loved what he said. He said, know your enemy. He said, we're living in a time you got to know your enemy. When you see a football team playing another football team, they watch the practice plays and they watch the films and they know who they're going up against. And we are in a time that we are knowing who we are going up against. Amen? We are knowing who we're going up against. <clears throat> when you let the Holy Spirit control your tongue and set a guard over your mouth, you will be speaking in agreement with God. You, I mean, I'm going to tell you, 2019, before 2019, I was saved. I believed Jesus was the Lord of my life. But if you looked at me and seen the way that I acted and talked, there's no way. Is he saved? He says he's saved, but there's no fruit. There was no fruit. In 2019, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, a lot of people, they say, well, he's talking about talking in tongues. He's talking about talking in tongues. But... Tongues is just a piece of it. Just a piece of it. If I told you this morning that I'm going to give you a gift, and that gift consists of a very nice watch, but when it comes to me giving you that gift, I only give you the second hand off the watch. You'd be like, I thought you were going to give me a gift. I am going to give you a gift. Here's the watch. I'm going to take it apart. I'm only going to give you the second hand. I wouldn't be giving you the gift. But the Holy Spirit of tongues is just a piece of the gift. There's a whole lot more boldness, encouragement. I mean, just a beautiful gift. I go on and on and on. You see, and, and a lot of people, when I see them in the jail, they come to me, and I'm preaching like I'm preaching now, and they say, I gave my life to Jesus, and I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They raise their hands, and I pray for them. And I'll lay my hands on them for them to receive the Holy Spirit. And instantly, they want, I see their mind turning. They want to wait for something to come upon them. But the same way you come to Jesus in faith and says, I believe that Jesus is the Lord of my life. You opened your mouth. You see? And the Holy Spirit revealed to your heart that Jesus is Lord. And you confessed it out of your mouth and you believed it in your heart, and you repented of your sins. You with me? And now you're a believer. And you see the disciples, the Holy Spirit come upon the disciples. That's what He told them in the book of Acts. He says, don't go until you receive the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll have the power. You with me? So he, they received the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you open your mouth. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't pray like Susie. I don't pray like Jimmy. I don't pray like John. I'm telling you right now in the book of Acts, it didn't say that they spoke fluently. It said they heard fluently. I'm telling you right now, I got a, I got a uh, two-year-old little girl, Kinley. Beautiful little girl. And it's so interesting when I hear her speak. Because she's learning how to speak. And there's certain words that she just don't even try. And you tell her to say it, and she just looks at you like, nope, don't even shake her head. But if you think about it, that's how we are in the body of Christ. We hear something that we can't understand with our mind, and a lot of times it's a heart issue. Our hearts hadn't been fully converted. 
our hearts hadn't been fully surrendered over to God. We got some kind of sin in our life. And God's revealed, there's sin in my life that hadn't even been revealed. But the more I, glo- more I go from glory to glory in God, the Holy Spirit convicts me of stuff in my life. He reveals these things to me. And a lot of times people don't receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because as soon as they come forward, they got their eyes on themselves. They got their eyes on themselves. And when you get your eyes off of yourself and put your eyes on Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit. You open your mouth. And a lot of times, what you hear come out of your mouth shocks you. I had a guy one time, he raised his hands, I laid hands on him, and he began to speak in tongues. He just, like, just, I, I mean, I can't even just, I mean, didn't even make, didn't even sound right. But you see, he opened his mouth, and he literally looked at me, and I just seen the peace of God come over him. And he instantly, he looked at me, he said, I'm dizzy. And it's because the flesh is so wicked. You with me? The flesh is so wicked. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will have the power to overcome that darkness in your life. You will have the power. I mean, if somebody told me you can overcome drug addiction and you're dealing with drugs, you come forward, I I don't even care if I really didn't believe them. I'd go forward just to see. If they told me to open my mouth, and they said if I would believe in my heart and repent of my sins and put my faith in God and be water baptized and be filled with the Holy Spirit, I say I take it. Even if I had to jump straight to the Holy Spirit. If I get saved in the Holy Spirit and go back and get water baptized. I mean, I don't care what order you do it. But I'm telling you right now, it is the wonderful key. Most beautiful thing you can do in your life. Beautiful. Pause, ponder, and pray. Pause, ponder, and pray. Stop. Okay, Lord. Done. I'm ready. And if you ain't got the answers then, let me get back with you. I need to learn that. that that's what I need to learn. Can I get back with you? Instead, I, I'm them four people. You with me? I'm going to get to them four people. <clears throat> Key word. Wait. Write that down. Wait. Wait. Why am I talking? Why am I talking right now? Wait. I don't know about you, but a lot of times I find myself talking just to be talking. And the faster I talk, I feel like people might accept what I'm talking. And a lot of times I have to just say, Wait, why am I talking? Why am I talking right now? Proverbs 10.19 Why am I talking right now? Why am I talking right now? And, and what, what I'm talking, is it in agreement with God? Or am I talking doubt and defeat? Am I talking victory? Am I talking what God says about my life? Am I saying I'm a masterpiece? Am I saying I can overcome temptation that's common to man that God will make a way to escape? Am I, am I talking the way God would want me to talk? Because a lot of times, if I'm not talking the way God wants me to talk, somebody's listening to what I'm saying. You with me? And the door is opened up, but it's instantly closed because I let a loose lip sink somebody's ship. I let a loose lip sink somebody's ship. The enemy sunk somebody's ship. That's what they did in World War II. In World War II, the enemy would go around listening in the bars of these, these uh, people on the boat, the Navy, whoever they were, and they would listen to what they were saying, and then they took what they said back and took the ship down. You open your mouth and let the enemy have access to your heart. And when the enemy has access to your heart, he sinks your ship. Proverbs 10.19 Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. I like that. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. I said, Amen, Lord. Let me write that down. Hold on, let me type it. Hold on, let me copy it. Let me paste it. Now I want this to sink in. I'm going to write it, handwrite it. You handwrite it. I'm going to tell you right now, the Word of God, you read it, you listen to it, you write it down, 
you learn how to say it, go to the Bible app, hit the play button. Zephaniah. I had to listen to that this morning. I was riding in, and uh, Megan heard Zephaniah on my phone. And I, she said, what was that about? I was like, I just want to make sure if I had the Lord have me say Zephaniah, I know how to say Zephaniah. I had never, three chapters, I ain't never even touched. Once or twice I touched Zephaniah, but I said, I'm going to know how to say Zephaniah. And I'll tell you something that I, I learned from a guy. I would listen to him, and he told, he told him, he said, he said, he tell you in seminary school, if there's a word you don't know, just say it real fast. Keep on going. Just say it real fast and keep on going. Or just skip it. The Lord might not want to reveal it to you at that time. Okay. Proverbs 18.21. Y'all don't forget those four types of people. Because when I say these four types of people, you're going to identify yourself as one. And I'm going to tell you which one I am. And you probably already know. As soon as I say these four types of people, you're going to say, yep, that's him. We, we know him. But I want you to identify where you stand. Because if the, first, the first step to recovery is admitting you've got a problem. Amen. And that's speaking from an ex-drug addict, an ex-alcoholic. You with me? You have to identify you have a problem and bring that problem to God and let Him anoint you with the Holy Spirit and fruit in your life. <clears throat> Proverbs 18.21 Good deal. Media is smoking tires this morning. <laughs> I'm giving Nick a hard time. He's on the computer back here. Praise God. Thank you, Nick. Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who walk, those who love to talk, will reap the consequences. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death. And a lot of times, you know, I, I, listen, to, I listen to certain preachers and I hear them talking about the words that come out of your mouth. And a lot of them are dead on point. But I hear a lot of the other ones saying, name it and claim it. And I'm with them, but I'm not with them. Because a lot of times, we want God to come in agreement with our words when we need to be making our words come in agreement with God's word. You, you want something, but what you want ain't what God wants you to have. I used to preach all the time. I said, you know what? I don't even know what I want. The Holy Spirit's going to reveal what I need. You with me? I mean, baby, look at a baby Christian. I love baby Christians. Baby Christians are so wonderful because they'll listen to anything you've got to say. You listen to a Christian that's mature and in the things of God, they ain't got time for you. They got it all figured out. There's a few of them that'll stop and listen, but a baby Christian, you have the time to spend with them. And you'll look at them and you identify them real quick. Like and a lot of times I could jump right back in a baby stage real quick. Just by what comes out of my mouth. You see, what comes out of my mouth can identify how mature I am in the Lord. He's speaking doubt. He's speaking unbelief. You mean to tell me he says what, what God says? No, that ain't in agreement with what God says. He's saying he can't. He's saying it's this, it's that. God will make it happen. God will make it happen. God will make it happen. You're here today because God made it happen for you. You got up this morning with faith in your heart that was small as a mustard seed, and it grew. And look at your life. Look at your life. It's so beautiful. Uh, four types of people, and we finna be closing here in just a second. Four types of people. <clears throat> people that think before they speak, people that think while they speak, people that think after they speak, people that don't think at all. Four types of people. Four types. I am a person that thinks while he's speaking. And you'll notice that. I have to stop. What did I just say? And he's like, whoa, don't let him lose us. But I have to get to a place where I am thinking before I speak. And the Holy Spirit will reveal everything in your heart to you. There's things that, that you don't even know that you're going to say. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll say them. 
You'll, have thing, you'll, be, you'll be thinking about that business meeting. Or you'll be thinking about that cousin you ain't seen in years. And you're going to visit them. And you're going to talk to them. And you don't even know what to say. All, all they know is what Facebook has said about you. You with me? We're living in a time of Facebook and TikTok. And people are not communicating one-on-one. They're looking, let me go to Facebook and see who's, who's doing what. And who's married who. And whose kids are, are with who. And this and that. And, and a lot of times, you have to incorporate what you say on Facebook is just like you saying something out of your mouth. You know, back in the day when you'd say something to somebody, you, they didn't know it unless you went and said it to them. But now you can get on Facebook and everybody can know what this person said about you and you ain't even got on Facebook. You don't even know they said it. But it eventually gets back to you. Be careful what you say on Facebook. Be careful what you do on TikTok. Because it can, it can, it can criminate your witness. It can criminate your witness. Joe, you're a preacher. You're a youth pastor. Why aren't you making TikToks on TikTok? Why aren't you doing this? You need to be reaching the youth on this. Yes, I love it, but I, I don't think that that's my calling. I don't think that's my calling. It, I mean, you just, wisdom, you got to know what to do and when to do it, and God's going to give you the know and the how. Amen. Amen? Four types of people. People that think before they speak. People that think while they speak, Joe. People that think after they speak. And people that don't think at all, Joe again. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. You with me? Watch your mouth. So powerful, so powerful. Isaiah 55, in verse 8 and 9, and verse 11. We're going to start in verse 8. Isaiah 55. You know, if what we say is really not that important, then why is everything in the Bible a confession and what we say out of our mouth. And, and I mean, everything that we do is to, to speak, go into all the world, preach the good news of the gospel. Everything we say. So power, the power of the tongue. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and verse 9. Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. You see that? The thoughts of God is totally different than Joe's thoughts. Totally different than Joe's ways. I have to be very, very, very careful. Because if I... What did Pastor Chad, he got up here, he says, Not Joe's way but Jesus' way. You with me? I was like, man, he's going to preach my message. You know? I love it, I love it, I love it. Verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in everything for which I sent it. You with me? God's word is going forth and accomplishing what He has sent it to do, and it will not come back void. It will not. If you come in agreement with God's Word, you will have everything you need that pertains to a godly life. Everything you need. I don't need the bass boat. I need God. I don't need, I don't need the four-wheeler. I don't need to go riding with my buddies and tell them, hey, I'm here to tell you about Jesus and put Jesus on the back of a four-wheeler and this and that. Hey, God calls people to that area. I went to Florida and there was a boat out there and there was people ministering Jesus and feeding these captains out there on Crab Island. Folks are drinking and acting fool and they're riding around giving lunches out and praying for these captains and witnessing. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. But that's not what God has me doing. God has called each and every one of us to a different area. But as we begin to receive the Holy Spirit, he reveals to our hearts what we need to be doing. He reveals everything to us. I've only been here since 2016, and here I am today, and I am amazed at how far God has brought me. Amazed. And I believe each and every one of you here can testify and look and say, you know what? 
He's bringing a lot of us a lot of places. And He's taking us there real fast. I believe He's taking us there real fast because He's coming back real fast. He's coming back real fast. <clears throat> Matthew twelve thirty four. <clears throat> for whatever, Matthew twelve thirty four. You brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Do you know we think in our heart and our mind? We think in our heart before we think in our mind. What you've already have thought in your heart, you begin to think in your mind. There are people that have had heart transplants. There was a, a 17-year-old boy that liked rock music, and there was a 67-year-old man that liked jazz music, and he got a heart transplant from the 17-year-old boy. He received the boy's heart and began to like rock music. That's a mess right there. You with me? So the heart is a very, very, very serious issue. That's why I tell people, a lot of times you come forward, you receive everything God has for you. Just, just let it all at the feet of Jesus. Let it all. Let it all at the feet of Jesus. I mean, I'm telling you right now, you can't look any more stupider than you already look. You can't. That's what I tell myself every morning. Lord, you're going to use me, and you're going to use me in a special way. And I say, really, Lord? He says, yes. And he says, I'm going to make you look like a fool for Jesus. I'm going to make you look like a fool for Jesus. I, I hope and pray each and every one of you look like a fool for Jesus. They say, something ain't right about him. No, ain't nothing right about him because he's not like the rest of you. There's a woman that is set apart for God. There's a man that's set apart for God. And guess what? Y'all do not look right to the world. And I'm okay with that. You okay with that? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Did you know we think in our heart and in our mind? Luke 2.35. You know, the heart. I just kept praying the heart. Because if I'm going to change anything on the outside in my flesh, it's something that's in my heart. There's something in my heart, okay? <clears throat> Luke 2.35 As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. A sword. A sword will pierce your very soul. And instantly I begin to think about the Word of God. As you hear the Word of God, as you read the Word of God, as you're listening this morning of the Word of God, it is doing something in your heart. And the Holy Spirit is revealing things to you. There's sickness in your body. There's things that you need deliverance from. Drug addiction, alcohol, lying, stealing. You're, you're arguing with your wife. You're arguing with your husband. You, your kids are going crazy. Please, I'm telling you, I have experienced it. I have experienced it. And everything is a result of what's in your heart. It's a result of what's in your heart. Hebrews 4.12 <clears throat> It's a result of what's in your heart. And the sword of the Word of God will cut that out of your heart. Whatever that is not of God. <clears throat> For the Word of God, Hebrews 4.12, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The thoughts and intents of the heart. The thoughts and intents of the heart. I love it. Even when you skip over it or you say it real fast, it's doing something. It's doing something. Because there's something that is happening on the inside of your spirit because God's Word will never return void. It's going to accomplish what He sent it to do. And it will not return void like He said in Isaiah. So when you speak the Word or you read the Word or listen to the Word, hit the play app, Zephaniah. 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 No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he didn't have one of them brains again. Y'all help him out. He's hung. <laughs> okay. Matthew 9, chapter 9, verse 4. Thank you, Jesus. We're right on time. Praise the Lord. We're, like, we're going to be like the Baptists this morning. We're going to make it. You with me? 
But I am going to make time for God's gift for you. I want to make sure that you don't show up here and God not have the opportunity to pray for you. I want you to have a time with God. I want you to. I, I mean, I don't know what you need, but I know God can give you exactly what you need. Matthew 9, verse 4. Jesus knew what they were thinking. So he asked them, Why do you have such evil thoughts in your hearts? Why do you have such evil thoughts in your hearts? That's what Jesus asked them. He knew what was in our hearts. He's asking us right now, What is in your heart? And you're asking yourself, Lord, I know what's in my heart. And I know it doesn't need to be there. Will you forgive me, Lord? And I'm telling you right now, Jesus forgives you. He forgives you. He has sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. He gave His life as a ransom so we could live in eternity forever. And all we have to do is receive the gift. Receive Jesus. And believe that He is the Son of God. Repent of your sins. Put your faith in God. And receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit. And I pray right now that you, here in just a moment, you receive the Holy Spirit. Or if you already have the Holy Spirit, you get a fresh refilling. You're in the filling station. You're in the filling station. And if you ain't going to get gas this morning, guess what? You're going to run out eventually. You're going to run out of gas. I've been there, and it fumes is rough, and if you ever have to get out and push it, you let Jesus push it because you don't want to push it because it's heavy. It's heavy, but you're going to call on the name of the Lord now, or you're going to call on the name of the Lord when He comes. Amen?